moving on. This is the next process called collect requirements. And the purpose here is to understand exactly what is needed to satisfy the stakeholders and capturing this in the requirements documentation. If you think about the fact that everything emanates from the requirements, you can see what a powerful process this is. And it's imperative that this is 100% complete. Get the requirements wrong, you'll get the scope wrong, and you'll get the cost, time and quality wrong. So it all starts here. What inputs do we use? Well, the scope management plan, because this describes how this particular process and the remaining ones are to be managed. And it also helps to clarify the requirements that the team will need to gather. The requirements management plan describes how the requirements will be collected and documented. Remember that the requirements are the main tool used to understand and manage the all important stakeholder expectations. And as I've already said, schedule, budget, quality, risk and others all feed back to the requirements itself. The stakeholder management plan describes exactly who the stakeholders are and how each individual or group needs to be managed and how much they need to be involved within the requirements process. The project charter, because of course it has a high level description of the project end product and the stakeholder register as this contains a list of all of the stakeholders and it's these individuals and groups that will help ensure that we accurately capture all the requirements. Making sure, and it's absolutely vital that we involve the correct stakeholders here, because if part way through the project we discover we spoke to the wrong people, then that would be an absolute project disaster. So the main outputs here is the requirements documentation, laying out precisely what needs to be formed and why each particular requirement is important. We'll look at this document in more detail shortly. The second output and the final output here is the requirements traceability matrix. And this is used to identify the source of each of the requirements, which could be an individual source or a department or an organization. If a particular individual, as an example, stated that one of the requirements is there should be a certain response speed on a piece of equipment, then it's important to know who it was that gave that information. OK, the tools used in Collect Requirements, there are quite a few here. Let me show them all to you because I shall be describing these in a separate slide simply because there are so many of them. Just be aware, here they all are, and we'll go into that in a moment. OK, so before we get on to the tools of Collect Requirements, I want to spend the next couple of slides on requirements themselves. So, first of all, Requirements are the primary means of understanding and managing stakeholder expectations. If you think about it, the stakeholders give you what they require and you provide a project which provides products and services that meet those requirements. So getting the requirements slightly wrong or open to misinterpretation can cause big problems for the project. Now to start with, you take the high level requirements that are normally stated within the project charter and this process, if you remember, was carried out within the project initiating process group. And we need to take those high level requirements and to refine them further so that they are more specific and detailed. Now think on this. Now the point I'm making here is that the project management plan, once approved, will be used by the project manager to deliver the project. And each and every one of the requirements will have some potential impact on the contents of that project management plan in terms of risk, scope, quality, budget, schedule and specifications. So you could well see how if a requirement was changed or modified or added in some way, this would certainly have an effect on the budget. And normally if it's a, an extra requirement, then that would cause some increase in the schedule and so on. So of course, if the requirements are expanded in some way, then that would cause the scope to be increased in some way as well. This is one of the main reasons why you need to refine the high level requirements so that they are fully specific, detailed and indeed measurable so that the project management plan will accurately deliver all of those requirements. So you'll recall in an earlier module when I took you through the developed project charter process and the project charter was created. At this point, this will contain those high level requirements I've talked about here. Now, as part of that, in a later module, we'll be looking at the stakeholder knowledge area. 
and the first process within that would be the identify stakeholders process. The main output from this is the stakeholder register, containing the details of all of the known stakeholders. Now we come on to the current module where we are collecting the requirements. And from here, we will go on to define the scope of the project. The main output of that is the project scope statement. And I want you to understand that it's very unlikely that you would first collect all the requirements, then create the project scope statement and get it right first time. As a result of capturing the scope of the project, this will cause one or more of the stakeholders to see that the requirements need to be modified or more details added in some way. So this will be an iterative loop, if you will, and it will get to the point where the requirements are fixed and known and all of the stakeholders agree that the project scope statement directly represents all of the requirements that have been captured. Now the project manager has a key part to play in this because he or she will be looking for additional requirements, being sure to consider any internal sources of requirements as well as external sources of the requirements. Any reports and regulations that need to be considered as part of the requirements. But then most importantly, the project manager, with the help of the team, needs to go on and analyse and then prioritise the requirements. And here I've made a pointer to one of the main techniques used called Moscow. It stands for must have, should have, could have and won't have for now. And this is another reason, of course, why collecting requirements and creating the project scope statement will be an iterative process. To start with, you may find your client saying to you, well, I've given you my requirements, they're all must-haves. Otherwise, I wouldn't have given them to you. And that's often the way it is at a high level. But as you break them down into more and more detail, you'll find that you can, in fact, prioritise them. And this is important. And as a result of that, it may be decided that some of those will be looked at later, possibly in a future project. So staying with requirements, and I've already mentioned about high level scope and high level requirements being created within the project charter, which will lay down at a high level what the deliverables of the project are and what the boundaries or scope of the project will be. Now, every requirement must be quantifiable. Remember, if you can't measure it, then how on earth could you prove to your client that that requirement has been met? And you will want to take the high level requirements in the project charter and break them down into a low level scope and detailed requirements within the requirements documentation. And to use the general term business requirements, these describe the details of the deliverables. So back to the project manager, the project manager needs to identify key deliverables based on the business requirements, that's these, in order to manage customer expectations and direct the achievement of the project goals. A good way of approaching exactly what requirements are is to ask a variety of questions and we'll look at some of the tools you could use in a moment by asking what do you need? What do you want? What conditions have to be met for you to be satisfied? The project manager's skills here, and this is important to remember, would be negotiating skills, active listening skills, brainstorming skills, or techniques if you will, and facilitating. Now when it comes to requirements, there's broadly two types if you will. There's product requirements, which describe features, and these describe the characteristics of the deliverables that the project will create. The other type is process requirements, which are about functions. And these describe how people will interact with a product and how a product interacts with other products, either within the scope of the project or other products that already exist, for example, in the operational area. <laughs>